In the ever-evolving and often unpredictable world of international politics, there always seems to be room for a jaw-dropping moment that captivates global attention. This time around, the spotlight was on a surprising pairing that defied expectations and sparked dialogue far beyond the formal greetings. Imagine, if you will, two influential leaders from seemingly opposite ends of the political spectrum convening under the same Floridian sky. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau unexpectedly found himself in such a headline-grabbing scenario, all set in motion by a dinner invitation from none other than former U.S. President Donald Trump. The meeting location, a place synonymous with opulence, the luxury Mar-a-Lago resort, served as a backdrop for discussions that carried high stakes on issues such as trade agreements and border security challenges. Trudeau's visit became the talk of the town, igniting both curiosity and controversy across political circles. Yet, amid the swirling discussions and speculations, the more burning question was not about what was exchanged in words during their meeting, but rather what was conspicuously left out of the dialogue. Welcome back to Street Politics Canada. As the fall of political dynamics, the gathering at Mar-a-Lago fell under intense scrutiny, becoming fodder for pundits and laypersons alike who pondered the far-reaching implications of this move. The picturesque setting of Mar-a-Lago provided a visually striking venue, yet the sunny ambiance was overshadowed by an unprecedented move from the former U.S. president. In a decision that seemed to raise eyebrows, Justin Trudeau, unlike many of his international counterparts, was denied the customary luxury stay at the exclusive hotel. This intriguing gesture, however, paled in comparison to the gravity of the discussions that ensued. Over the course of a three-hour dialogue, Trudeau and Trump delved into critical topics, including potential tariffs and the mounting issues of drug trafficking across borders. On the surface, the meeting appeared productive, suggesting a positive step forward. The reality is that Trudeau has lost control of the deficit of immigration and of our border. In less than two months, President Trump will come into office. He has threatened the possibility of imposing tariffs unless there is action to address Trudeau's broken border. Since Trudeau became Prime Minister, there have been massive increases in illegal border activity. It is his job to immediately introduce action to solve it. Now, it's not just for Donald Trump. Frankly, we have to acknowledge that he is the new President of the United States of America, and we have to protect our economic interests, but we have to protect our own interests. It is unacceptable for Canadians to have 47,000 overdose deaths. However, back in Canada, Conservative leader Pierre Polyev wasted no time in voicing his criticisms. With a sharp tongue and swift commentary, Polyev highlighted the perceived lack of tangible results from the meeting, humorously pointing out the Prime Minister's seeming talent for returning home with nothing more than a collection of unfulfilled promises and questionable souvenirs. Polyev's critiques did not stop merely at Trudeau's diplomatic approach, his pointed observations emphasized the absence of significant trade exemptions or assurances that could have alleviated the threat of looming tariffs, adding fuel to his argument of governmental inefficiency. After nine years of Justin Trudeau, everything is bro broken. Work doesn't pay. Housing costs have doubled, rising faster than in any other G7 country to the point where 80% of Canadians now, for the first time ever, believe home ownership is just for the very rich. Vancouver and Toronto are now among, among the most expensive housing markets in the world. We have 1,400 homeless encampments in Ontario alone, 35 in Halifax. Uh, food prices have risen 37% faster in the United States than they have in Canada a gap that has appeared and widened with the application of the carbon tax on the farmers who grow our food and the truckers who ship our food. A tax that Justin Trudeau and the NDP Liberals now want to quadruple to 61 cents a litre, which would not only starve our people and kill our jobs, but would grind our economy to a halt. We know that President Trump would be calling all of our businesses, welcoming them to leave Canada and go south of the border where there is no carbon tax and where other taxes are dropping. It would be a gigantic sucking sound of Canadian jobs, businesses and money heading south that would add to the already half trillion dollars of net outflow of investment from Canada to the U.S. that has happened since Justin Trudeau took office nine years ago. 
Drawing comparisons to former Prime Minister Stephen Harper, Polyev suggested that a more assertive and uncompromising stance might yield more concrete benefits in negotiations with the U.S. The irony, as Polyev wittingly noted, was evident in the seemingly productive nature of the meeting that resulted in what some pundits humorously described as a nothing sandwich, complete with a side of political jargon and empty rhetoric. As if diplomatic drama weren't enough, conspiracy theories began to sprout like weeds in spring. How could a meeting that carried so much promise falter so dramatically? Whispers and rumors emerged, speculating on whether Trudeau might be losing his previously praised diplomatic touch, or whether he was distracted by mundane thoughts, perhaps wondering if he had left his oven on back home in Ottawa. Even as Trudeau and his team attempted to portray an image of renewed collaboration and strategic unity, skeptics could only perceive smudged brushstrokes on a fragile canvas of diplomatic uncertainty. The reality, as Poiliev articulated with palpable concern, seemed to suggest an inescapable truth. Trudeau's leadership might be faltering under the increasing weight of both domestic and international pressures. After nine years of Trudeau, we've gone from having equal median income. Canadian and American workers made the same amount of money 10 years ago, to income per person now $22,000 higher in the United States than it is here in Canada after nine years of high taxes, more bureaucracy, and doubling of our national debt. And then there is this, the, the broken immigration, broken budget, and broken border. Justin Trudeau has, is a weak leader who has lost control of spending, lost control of immigration, and lost control of our border. And don't take my word for it. Look at the facts. His own government admits there are as many as 500,000 people in Canada illegally. We now know that seizures of fentanyl doses by U.S. Border Patrol at U.S.-Canada border have more than tripled between last year and this year. In 12 months to September, the 12 months to September 2024, 11,600 pounds of drugs have been seized by U.S. Border Patrol agents uh, at the uh, Canada-U.S. border. In 2024, U.S. border guards caught 10 times more people sneak sneaking southward from Canada than in 2022. Uh, this is a problem that we expect will only get worse because we have 700,000 international students here now that Trudeau and his former immigration minister, Sean Fraser, uh, hinted that they would be able to stay permanently. And now suddenly that message has reversed and Trudeau and the NDP Liberal government say that their plan is to hope, with the honour system, that they will leave voluntarily. The atmosphere, thick with speculation and intrigue, became a breeding ground for theories and debates that stretched beyond the borders of either nation. There were questions regarding which nation would emerge with the upper hand from this controversial engagement, and whether Trudeau had effectively leveraged this opportunity to bolster Canada's standing on a global scale. Critics argued that while the meeting held potential as a diplomatic win, the absence of clear action points or signed agreements left it open to interpretation as a diplomatic misfire. The controversy seemed to underscore the delicate balance required in international relations, where public perception can significantly influence political outcomes. In the intricate and often perplexing arena of cross-border diplomacy, one cannot help but wonder whether this meeting between Trudeau and Trump was a missed opportunity or a crucial decision in a broader strategic play, an indispensable chess move on the grand political board. Regardless of perspectives on effectiveness, Trudeau's Mar-a-Lago experience undeniably casts a long shadow over an administration already facing a myriad of domestic challenges. Poiliev remains unabashed in pointing out the perceived shortcomings of such diplomatic engagement, firmly urging for a recalibration of strategies to prevent future political missteps. It is a clarion call to action for Canadians who value and prioritize robust leadership, particularly in the face of intense international pressure. The rhetorical arena surrounding this meeting acts as a reminder of the critical role that public opinion plays in shaping diplomatic paths. Such high-stakes engagements provide both risks and opportunities, but they ultimately call upon leaders to reflect on their strategies, adapt to new realities, and strive for outcomes that resonate with the needs and aspirations of their constituents. As observers of this political theater, one must consider both the overt and nuanced gestures made within such contexts, as they can profoundly influence regional alliances and global perceptions.
Looking ahead, the key lies in refining diplomatic approaches, prioritizing transparency, and ensuring that international dialogues contribute meaningfully to the global common good. As the world tuned in, analysts and political watchers speculated on the motivations behind such an unexpected meeting. The convergence of Trudeau and Trump, figures often seen as embodiments of differing political philosophies, cast a spotlight on the pressing issues that transcend partisan boundaries. There was no denying the symbolic weight of this diplomatic encounter, where the intentions ranged from reinforcing alliances to challenging existing paradigms. The intrigue surrounding the meeting also hinted at the complex and often speculative nature of international diplomacy, where the stakes are persistently high and the outcomes frequently uncertain. With a tinge of frustration, conservatives and political commentators alike might ponder Canada's actual standing and influence at the international negotiating table. The trajectory of the country's future on the global stage may indeed hinge as much on its diplomacy as on its leadership's ability to not only respond to emerging challenges but also to learn from past errors. Well, that's all for now. Do you think Trump's move was a tactic against Trudeau to test him? Let us know what you think in the comments below. And if you haven't, please subscribe and leave a like for this video. Your support helps us continue our work. You can also follow us on Twitter, where we post stuff we can't post on YouTube. You can find the link in the description below. Thanks again for your support, and I will see you in the next one.